Hello, 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 everybody here. It's Dr. Wild again talking about different topics on science. Remember, guys, that we create and design this podcast to let everybody know about Harvard University and the magazine of Harvard Medical School. You can also visit our official website, which is magazine.hmr.harvard.edu. You will be able to browse thousands of thousands of articles by issue or by topic. You will be asking Dr. Wild which topics do we have? Research, community, education, care delivery hours, and achievement. The article to read review today is Carpus Dixie. Remember guys, the article is Carpus Dixie. This is an uh, article from the artificial intelligence issue. Greece from digital devices promise to help people manage their health. It's an offer that may have a string attached. Amy Newell said she had a breakthrough because of a mobile phone app. Several years ago, the 43 years old software engineer was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and has since been trying everything she can to manage the cruising symptoms. Unfortunately, they were resistant to medication, she said. Sit in a coffee shop, Newell pulled out her phone and scrolled to find the app that tracks her daily symptoms. A calendar appears with about half of days filled with a little notes about mood, medication, diet, and exercise. These are all useful data for Newell when she faced difficult treatment decision. She recalls how this past summer she used the app to track her mood in response to drinking alcohol. Her doctor had been urging her to stop drinking because of potential interactions with a medication, but she resisted. After curbing her drinking for a month and tracking her results on her app, she found alcohol was indeed a major precursor of depressive symptoms. From Cambridge, Massachusetts at Harvard University, I want to remind you guys that we mostly base are doing these beautiful reviews for our deck base from the magazine of Harvard Medical School. I will continue doing these reviews right away. Newell is one of a growing number of patients who manage the chronic health condition with the help of smartphone apps and wearable digital devices. An estimate of 250,000 mobile health apps exist on the market today, doing everything from tracking steps and calculating insulin doses to promising to support medication practice and boost cognitive function. Given the advice of this market, it is not hard to imagine a future in which your phone could what you about potentially deadly conditions such as a trial fibrillation or help you manage medication. Even health insurers are integrating these devices in to their programs. In 2017, United Healthcare, a leading insurance company in the United States, announced partnership with Fibit, Garmin, and Samsung. Makers of popular with one activity trackers will would allow members to receive financial incentives by lowering a greater number of steps each day. A whole suite of tools is now available to help people manage their health, but this fast-moving, commercially driving trend remains largely outside the oversight of the healthcare regulatory establishment. Instead, companies often are validating their own products in facing product usability and stickness over data privacy and efficacy considerations. Useful, perhaps occur, perhaps not. Earlier this year, Phoebe in the company that made the Phoebe Web World's activity trackers agreed to a citizen a class action last field in 2016 by the state of California because of technical problems with the heart rate sensor for two versions of this device. Researchers at California State Polytechnic University found that due to moderate and high intensity exercise, the device underestimated heart rate readings by 15 to 22 bits per 
per minute. On average, when compared to electrocardiograms readings, such an error range is potentially dangerous, especially if the water used the devices to determine maximum heart rate during exercise. A 2017 study by scientists at the University of Wisconsin also found inaccuracies for the two devices studied by the California researchers and for risk one activity trackers by two other manufacturers. Apps are free or low cost because you are paying with your personal health data. The business model right now is your data. All such activity trackers measure heart rate by emitting a beam of black light onto the skin on the inside of the wrist. Some of the emit light is absorbed, some it reflects back. The device senses difference in light reflection that occurs at the heart beats and sends a blood pulsing through the arteries, causing a change in volume. But the variation in reflection is very small and can be overpowered by changes in light reflection resulting from movement. If a person is jogging and jostling around, for example, the heart rate monitor can miscalculate or even shut down altogether. It is important to realize that although may apps appear useful, the actual evidence for clinical efficacy is nonsense, says John Torus, the MBA, a Harvard Medical School instructor in psychiatry and director of the Division of Digital Psychiatry at Beth Israel Dickens Medical Center. I think we have to demand high quality evidence. Torus is involved in an American Psychiatry Association effort to evaluate mental health apps and aid consumers in making informed decisions. When it comes to questionable accuracy, activity trackers are not alone. A few years ago, insulin doses calculator apps came under scrutiny. Patients with diabetes need to calculate insulin doses daily and a number of apps has been developed to make this task easier. Researchers at Imperial College in London, however, found out of nearly 50 apps designed to calculate insulin dose, about 70 percent risk recommending an inappropriate dosage. Broadly 90 percent of them lack ever validation to ensure that the data entered was correct, allowing mistakes that could lead to dangerous medication errors. A few years ago, the United Kingdom National Health Service opened a library containing a collection of mobile health apps that had to meet high standards of privacy. Inclusion of an app in the library was meant to assure consumers that sensitive health data would not be mishandled. Software developers were required to answer a series of questions regarding their security protocols. The question is explore whether the apps would meet the NHS medical privacy standards. A review in 2015 by researchers at Imperial College, however, found that many of the apps stored medical data in ways that left the data vulnerable to interception. Nearly 20% of the apps have no privacy standards at all. Two-thirds of the apps send identifying information over the internet without encryption, and nearly 80% of those have a policy on sharing data that lack it. Documentation about encryption practices Four apps transmitted both health and identifier information without inscription. The NHS example underscored the difficulty of keeping health data secure in a maker where personal data drive profits. Apps are free or low cost because you are paying with your personal health data, says Toros. The business model right now is your data.
Joseph Zurba, the Information Security and IT Compliance Officer at Harvard Medical School, reviews the security of apps and real-world digital devices used in Harvard Medical School research studies. He thinks that security digital health technology is more difficult than securing traditional medical record data because digital records face to constantly evolving trees, hackers, and malware. He points to the data breach early this year at my fitness poll a popular fitness tracking app in the press 150 million accounts were compromised with the hackers making off with usernames scrambled passwords and email addresses Surba says that balancing data privacy with the data collection potential of these devices is a complicated dance Companies are really interested in aggregated information, but when you talk about genetic information, I think people should be going into with their eyes open. We certainly can say never use these devices, say Surba. They can be very useful from a research perspective. Surba points to the Apple Research Kit as a tool that can be gathered data on such things as how many steps you take, the length and cadences of your strike and the number of flights of stairs climbed. The data are combined with, for example, heart rate data gathered from a wristwatch digital device, he says, you have a well of data for use in research. To help secure participants' data on such devices, Surba has come up with creative workarounds during one study he asked research participants to create email accounts using false names and birthdays in order to protect their true identity during storage with third-party service. For Iglen Cole, the James Atahu and Leslie Williams Professor of Law at Harvard Law School, the degree of worry over our data should vary depending on which data are being considered. When consumers are worried about losing data collected from the tracked devices, he uses when they maintain perspective. If, however, they are using apps that handle more sensitive information, like the genetic data that life insurance company requests to determine a health risk, he believes ample caution is warranted. While there are laws that prevent employers and insurers from discriminating against people based on their genetic profiles, most states still allow life insurers to request genetic data if they are available. Technology now evolves faster than regulatory bodies that govern it. One agency confronting the outcomes of this evolution in the United States Food Drug Administration and like traditional hardware-based medical devices products that occupy digital health technology space are often software-based. Keeping up with the phase of software development and the innovation in digital health technologies that the Food Drug Administration seeks to foster has led the agency to an innovation of its own the software pre-certification pilot program launched in 2017. According to the Food Drug Administration, the program will help inform the development of a regulatory model to access the safety and effectiveness of software technologies without inhibiting patients' access to these technologies. The program adds a product category called SAMD, Software as a Medical Device. At ECC, Simple. The new program would certify companies rather than individual products and, much like a transportation security administration program, allows pre-approved passengers. Sprite security checks will allow pre-certificate companies at faster route to food drug administration clearings. Apple, Fiti, and Samsung are among the nine companies currently participating in the pilot program.
Dan Webster is one of those researchers by the Food Drug Administration Improvement in Software. Webster, a principal scientist for digital health and sage bio network and non-profit abuse and use collaborative tools to support the integration of data science into biomedical research, is the scientist lead on the digital health effort at the all of US research programs. The program launched in 2016 is an element of the Precision Medicine Initiative in the National Institute of Health. Its goal to enroll one million people living in the United States, collect data on their health, demography, genomics, and behavior, and ultimately make that data available to medical professional researchers and patients who seek to work collaboratively on making healthcare decisions. The All of Us program was designed with patients as activity partners from its inception, full transparency and its approach and data collection, and clear privacy standards that place participants in control of their data and how it's shared, says Torres, who is also an advisor for the arms of the project focus on designing a smartphone tracking. Uh, all right, guys, remember this article has been posted by the magazine of Harvard Medical School in the title of Monique Brulee uh, is a Massachusetts based science writer. All right, guys, I hope to see you next time. If you want to research this article from our dad bus, it's Carpus Dixie. All right, have a beautiful day, everybody. See you next time. Bye bye.